Two weeks ago, a paper was published in the journal The Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences about the discovery of a Mesolithic megastructure submerged under the Baltic Sea. At almost a kilometre long, the linear structure is made up of thousands of stones and is unusual for that area and that time period. The authors of the paper discuss the analyses they've carried out and the arguments for and against a natural or anthropogenic origin. Let's get into it. The submerged structure was discovered in the Bay of Mecklenburg in the Baltic Sea. This bay was mostly shaped by the Weisselian glaciation towards the end of the Pleistocene. Since then, as a result of glacial isostatic rebound, several transgression and regression phases have been identified in the region. A transgression is when a coastline moves landward and a regression is when it moves seaward. During the current geological epoch, the Holocene, the water in the Baltic Sea has alternated between fresh, brackish and marine water due to the opening and closing of drainage channels into the North Sea. Between 13,300 and 12,700 years ago, the sea level rose by around 20 metres. During the Littorina transgression between 8,570 and 8,000 years ago, it rose a further 10 metres. Currently, the Bay of Mecklenburg has a depth of around 28 metres. In the past, researchers have found 23 submerged sites in the region dating to between 8,500 and 5,000 years ago. Up until this recent find, no older submerged sites were known in northern Germany, only above ground in the hinterland. However, older underwater sites have been found in Scandinavia and the eastern Baltic. Investigating submerged structures requires an interdisciplinary approach. In 2021, a team of researchers in the fields of archaeology and marine geosciences utilized a range of methods to identify the underwater structure. They used a combination of shipborne and autonomous underwater vehicle hydrocaustic data, sedimentological samples collected by scientific divers, and photography to determine that a megastructure was located at a depth of 21 meters in the Bay of Mecklenburg. Named the blinker wall by the researchers, the structure is linear, stretches for almost one kilometer and is around one meter in height. It is located on a bathymetric ridge that's oriented northeast to southwest and faces the landward side. The wall is made of 1,673 granite stones, mostly weighing under 100 kilograms each. However, 288 heavier stones were identified, with the largest weighing an estimated 11,389 kilograms. At the point where this heavy stone is found, the wall changes direction slightly from west to east to southwest to northeast. The 10 heaviest stones all mark areas where the wall changes its strike direction. The strike is where the horizontal plane of the stone meets the inclined surface. Further investigations were carried out on the areas surrounding the blinker wall, and it was concluded that the structure had been built on top of reworked basal till deposits dating to the Weisselian glaciations. After the ice retreated, the area was repeatedly flooded. The area where the blinker wall was built would have been above sea level during the low stand of the Baltic ice lake around 12,800 years ago, and at the low stand of the Yolida Sea around 11,700 years ago. Both of these dates are within the Younger Dryas. Although sedimentary and erosion processes have created areas near the wall covered in scattered stones, it's unlikely that the blinker wall is a natural formation since the stones are packed side by side for a distance of 971 meters and there's no known natural process that could create that. The authors of the paper do discuss all the natural processes that can transport stones and potentially create a structure such as the blinker wall. One such process is that caused by a tsunami. However, tsunamis are rare in the Baltic Sea and are unlikely to place stones side by side for such a long distance. Furthermore, the wall is located on the landward side of the bathymetric ridge, so the ridge would have reduced the energy from such a wave anyway. Glaciers are also capable of transporting stones. After the Weisselian glacial retreat, material known as moraine was left behind. There are several types of moraine. Lateral, medial and terminal moraines can consist of stones such as those that make up the wall. 
However, lateral and medial moraines are associated with valleys and terminal moraines are found at the end of glaciers. The paleo landscape we're discussing here did not have glacial valleys and was not at the end of the glacier. Its topography is a more suitable match for ground moraine, except that such material is composed of till rather than this sort of stone. So it's unlikely that the blinker wall is a natural byproduct of glacial movements. It's also mentioned in the paper that there's no gravel fraction, which would be expected in this case. Another idea put forward in the paper is that the blinker wall was a natural ridge formed due to subglacial meltwater tunnels called eskers. Many of these have been found in the Baltic Sea, some as tall as 50 meters in height and as wide as 150 meters. The low height and narrow width of the blinker wall, as well as the lack of a gravel fraction, are not compatible with it being an esker. In other parts of Scandinavia, drifting ice containing sediment has been known to cause beach ridges. However, for this to have happened at the location of the blinker wall, the coastline had to have been 21 meters lower and there had to have been available stones from the outcrop of basal till in the basin to the south. The authors calculate that the ideal conditions for this would have arisen more than 13,000 years ago. And this would mean the ridge had to then withstand multiple subsequent transgressions and regressions, which is unlikely considering the wall's narrow width. Also, such ridges tend to be much wider than the blinker wall and to have a gravel fraction. Furthermore, the blinker wall is at a depth of 21 meters on the eastern end, but at a depth of 21.5 meters on the western end. A shoreline is unlikely to have had such a variation over less than one kilometer. In conclusion, the research team think no known natural processes are likely to have caused the wall, but drifting ice is more plausible than the other ideas. The research team then go on to discuss whether modern day anthropogenic activities may have resulted in the blinker wall. Since there are no basal complexes in northern Germany, stones for construction have traditionally been derived from glacial deposits. From the 18th century until its prohibition in 1906, stone fishing took place in multiple locations along the shoreline of Mecklenburg West Pomerania. However, the authors don't think the blinker wall is a byproduct of stone fishing, since all the locations where it's known to have taken place were in shallow waters. Stones often get accumulated during the construction of seabed cables and pipelines. However, the nearest such structure is the Baltic Cable, which is more than three kilometers to the north and was built within fine grained deposits, so wouldn't have caused the uplift of the type of stones that make up the wall. It's also not likely that the strike direction of the wall would change at the exact position where the heaviest stone is placed if it was the result of this type of process. The most likely origin for the blinker wall is anthropogenic activity in prehistory. Since it's located at a depth of 21 meters, the terminus antiquem is between 8,570 and 8,000 years ago when the area became submerged. A terminus postquem has been calculated at 9,100 years ago based on the dating of wood from the uppermost peat sample of the nearby Paleo Lake. This means a hunter-gatherer society was responsible for building the blinker wall. Nothing man-made of this size is known from that time in the region. In the late and end Mesolithic, groups living on the coast exploited marine resources using fish weirs, but these were made of wood and were a lot smaller than the wall. Stone fish weirs are known from other parts of the world, but are usually located in rivers or on coasts with strong tides. Otherwise, they don't function properly. The location of the blinker wall doesn't match this. It's also too narrow to act as a sea defense like similar Neolithic structures in the Near East. The authors suggest that the blinker wall was built to assist hunting, perhaps to herd ungulates. Huge stone structures called kites have been found in the Near East Greenland and the Great Lakes of North America and are thought to have been for herding animals during hunting seasons. The site labelled as Drop 45, located on the Alpena Amberley Ridge in Lake Huron in the United States, is similar to the blinker wall in several ways. It's located on the top of a slope below the crest, it's got a lake shore on one side, it's built directly onto the bedrock, it's preserved at a depth of more than 20 metres and it's a solid continual structure. Diving surveys have uncovered lithic artefacts at Drop 45 and it's thought to have been used for herding animals. 
Drop 45 is a lot smaller though, and is made up of two stone lanes that narrow the gap between them, creating a more obvious snare for animals. However, the researchers have identified two structures near the blinker wall, which may also be man-made and have created this type of drive lane for ungulates, most likely reindeer. The paper is interesting and open access. If you want to read it, it's referenced in the description below. The argument for an anthropogenic origin would be a lot stronger in my opinion if they had found lithic artifacts around it like they have at Drop 45 in Lake Huron. Perhaps future dives will uncover more compelling evidence. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. The algorithm deity likes that sort of thing. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. If you want to join my Patreon community or support me as a YouTube channel member, all the details are in the description below. I'll see you next time.